<laughs> There's that piece of it. Um, hopefully he didn't mean that literally, I didn't take it literally. But, um, you know, density is, is a real issue, right? When you buy your house and it becomes your home, you don't just buy a house, you join a neighborhood. And when you join that neighborhood, you're not looking for it to change a whole lot because you have that mind picture of what your neighborhood is. Um, as been mentioned earlier, um, density has its place here in our city among the commercial centers and so forth, and we need to look at that um, in terms of what makes sense in our upcoming comprehensive plan. As I mentioned earlier, I've been working on that for the past couple of years. So hopefully we'll come up with a consensus as to what that means in our activity centers, and uh, I look forward to arriving at our final comprehensive plan for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is addressed to Mr. Haas, Ms. Lynn, Ms. Miller, and Mr. The city is again participating in Solarize Nova to encourage city homeowners to install photovoltaic solar panels. But the city has not a single solar panel on its buildings. Hmm. What is your position on requiring the city to install photovoltaic solar panels in city buildings, particularly new construction such as the new fire station and the community center? Thank you. That's an important question about our future and how we become sustainable, not just in terms of solar panels, but everything that we do in this community from preserving open space and, and, and environmental practices that make sure that we pass our community on to generations to come in a way that is, is, uh, is oriented toward protecting those resources. I would not support requiring solar panels. I think it needs to be looked at as an option. Um, I think it needs to be given incentives to incentivize those opportunities, but I think there are a wide array, array of practices that we can uh, continue to, to, to talk about. Ms. Passy talked about the composting program. That's about our future sustainability. We talk about our parks and open space. That's about future sustainability. <laughs> Finally, we need to make sure that we sustain the kind of level of services we have in, in the future. In order to do that, we need sound, efficient, practical economic opportunity that protects and ensures those resources that will be available for future generations. Thank you. I think again, um, as a council member, we need to have a better communication with the citizens of the city of Fairfax. Uh, what what the city of the city of the citizens of the city of Fairfax want? Do they want this or not? I think that we need to have a better communication. So if I, once I become a uh, city council, I will continue to walk and canvas and knock on your doors to see what are your concerns and issues. And these issues about the sustainability of the city of Fairfax, I will continue to listen and discuss. And as Tom had just mentioned, um, it has to be the uh, supply and demand and cost and benefit. So you definitely need to be looked at, uh, evaluated, and see if there could be some benefits that could be offered to the <coughs> residents that would be installing these solar panels. Ms. Nelly. Oh, thank you. Um, I uh, am a big proponent of uh, solar panels. Actually, the house that I lived in for 40 years, we had a solar hot, hot water heater that was uh, installed in the early 80s, and it was it was a real boon and uh, would encourage anyone who's interested in solar to consider that as their first step. Um, that said, uh, when we talk about sustainability, it's how we sustain our entire community, and the city does promote sustainability by working with our residents in a number of ways through recycling uh, and options such as rain barrel uh, and uh, composting. But we also do some things such as providing hybrid crew buses. Uh, as the city uh, refurbishes or retrofits buildings, I do believe that we should look seriously at solar and different ways that we can incorporate it into existing buildings or any new buildings that we might undertake in the future. Mr. Stanley. Well, well, thank you for the question. And, and Solarize is a, is a great competition among the Northern Virginia areas. Um, I can tell you that immediately following this, I'll send Ms. Kupka a note and say, did we look at all of our buildings and what's the next status on there? Because it's a great way to quickly win that competition. So I, I like where we're headed in that particular direction. But from a larger perspective, it is about how we change the conversation and really think about working with our Environmental Sustainability Committee 
what are we doing long term? We're part of the Go Green initiative with the Virginia Municipal League, really painting that picture for how we get to platinum rating. That's important not just for the rating aspect of there, but for attracting and creating a sense of place in here. We talked about being a destination. Folks are looking for the destination with curbside composting. They're looking for a destination where it's easy to do solar. I'm on my board of my HOA. We have a lot of rooftops. It's hard to get 100 people to agree to something. We should help our backbone, those HOAs who are out there, make that possible for them in different types of buildings as well. I think it's a great question. I think we'll continue to learn. And I look forward to, to getting some further answers. Thank you. Due to time constraints, we must be at the conclusion of our forum. Thank you for Thank <laughs> you. 
feel like we all need to come up with a gimmick at the end to remind you of who to vote for. But uh, I do. Ryan. <laughs> I, um, as I mentioned early on at the beginning of my comments this evening, I've been involved in our community for a long time. I believe in citizen involvement uh, wholeheartedly. Um, I didn't get a chance earlier to mention I am also a member of the American, American Legion here in the city of Fairfax, but I think most importantly I want you to walk away tonight with the understanding that I understand that we're at a critical juncture here in the city of Fairfax. We need to be able to strike the right balance here in our city between what we have today and what is possible. What we build today, ladies and gentlemen, will determine our future, and so we need to come to a place of consensus where we get that right. I ask for your vote on May 1st, and since we're all about gimmicks, if you put up your hand and you walk into the voting booth, I'm number five. <laughs> I think it's on your hand. All right, so I ask for your vote on May 1st. Thank you all very much for coming. Or two plus two equals four. <laughs> we got that too. <laughs> strategy for the future. So how do you make the right choice for this very important local election? You examine each candidate's record or other activities of their positions and vision for Fairfax. You ask yourself, does this candidate have real ideas that they can accomplish and do they make sense? Does the candidate have the know-how and the skills to develop and implement a viable vision for Fairfax while facing the challenges of inevitable change? I have and will continue to do both. I understand our desire to protect neighborhoods. I've heard from businesses about why they are or are not choosing Fairfax as their own. I understand both sides and believe there are ways of fostering economic growth while enhancing our sense of place. So if you want a balanced and thoughtful approach to leading the city, then I ask once again that you cast your vote for me on May 1st. Uh, uh, so I said it at the beginning of the evening and I'll say it again. The city of Fairfax is at a pivotal time in its history. Many of the issues we discussed this evening are issues I've been engaged in on a variety of roles the past eight years that I've lived here. As I said again, responsible planning today yields good growth tomorrow. My husband and I put our roots here in the city of Fairfax and we are proud of the choice we made. I want to see that it remains a good choice for our four boys and for our current and future residents and all current and future residents of our city. I have the knowledge, the experience, and the skills to continue to be an effective city council member who represents you and finds common ground. I am excited to see this community work together to achieve some great successes in our city moving forward in a positive direction in the next two years. You have the opportunity to vote for six people to work together and to represent you as your city council for the 2018-2020 term. And I ask for your vote on May 1st. Thank you again for coming this evening, and thank you again to the League of Women Voters and Central Fairfax Chamber and the city staff for organizing this event. Well, thank you, and if you've seen the Emoji Movie, I have no comment. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for the discussion this evening. We've covered a lot of ground tonight. I especially want to thank my wife, Steph, Zoe, and Cooper for being here and giving me the opportunity to serve. We are a family. I shared with you a word last time I was elected, and that's Tios Faye. It's the people you travel through life with. That's what we are here in the city of Fairfax. I am enthusiastic about the future of our city. I look forward to continuing to work with our powerful local businesses on how we deal with the open, open areas that we have and how we create even more energy for them. I look forward to continuing to engage with those students from George Mason on how we talk about the future together. You are choosing a team of six on May 1st. That six is going to work together collaboratively to guide the future of your city. I am proud that the city of Fairfax is Zoe and Cooper's hometown. And I ask for your continued support and vote on May 1st. Thank you. Um, thank you to the League, Women, League of Women Voters and the Chamber for organizing this event tonight. And thank you for coming out this evening and attending this event. I know you all have probably something better to do. It has been my honor and privilege to serve this community as a reliable volunteer and as a trustworthy elected official. I'd like to reassure you that my commitment to continue 
as a dependable, productive, hardworking member of the next city council remains as strong today as it was four years ago. I value the following, collegial working relationships with our mayor, my fellow council members, our city staff, and other elected officials. Two, thoughtful review and analysis of city issues. Three, listening to you, the community members, and four, providing outstanding uh, constituent services. I pledge to do my best for each city resident and members of our business community. I appreciate the trust you have placed in me, and I am asking for your continued support. Please remember to vote for me, Janice Miller, on Tuesday, May the 1st. I am number one on the ballot, and that is so weird. <laughs> and I just want to say one aside, um, most of us, many of us in this room remember Armistice Turturro, who was an institution and who did many great things for our city. Her advice to me was always, honey, put on more lipstick and you need to smile. <laughs> but thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs>